Douglas, Mark Wade, writer of Superman Birthright, and you're listening to Krypton Report. I am your host, Tyler, and welcome to Krypton Report, a podcast dedicated to all things Superman, Supergirl. We're going to look at the Supergirl TV series, as well as the Krypton TV series, anything that has to do with the characters in their world. Comics, movies, TV shows, we will talk about everything and anything. We are part of the Southgate Media Group Podcasting Network. You can find us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Krypton Report. You can also email us at kryptonreportpod at gmail.com. If you get a chance to go over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, please leave us a review to help us get better. You can find me personal at JTY Patrick on Twitter and everything else. Today on the Krypton Report, we will be discussing the Justice League trailer Heroes, as well as Justice League footage, I guess you could say. And I won't be doing this by myself. I have with me a voice that you're getting used to hearing here, Mr. James Cole. Welcome back, James. Hey, thanks for having me back. Uh, no. I'm excited. I'm excited to talk about Justice League. <laughs> All right. So they released what they're calling the final trailer for Justice League last week. And we waited a week to do this because, as we're going to discuss, they've released three TV spots. And then an AT and T is releasing like one little video a week, um, highlighting each character. And this week's video was Aquaman. So we've got little snippets since the trailer. So you can tell the marketing machine is is in full swing behind Justice League. And I, you know what? A lot of people are worried about this film. I'm going in. It's had a weird production. I'm gonna push all that out of my head. And I'm going in just ready to enjoy seeing the Justice League on the screens. These characters that I've loved for so long, all up there together. <clears throat> Definitely me as well. Um, you know, everybody's going to have their opinions. People are going to be, you know, for whatever reason, you know, the way it seems DC gets the harder rap than anything else, but, um, <clears throat> Uh, I'm going in completely wanting to see everything for myself, um, no matter what anybody says. Um, I mean, I'm a fan of Zack Snyder, uh, mo- you know, all of his films and, you know, Man of Steel, BVS, no, no different. And I'm sure Justice League is going to be great just for having all these characters on on the big screen together for the first time. I, I like BVS. I can understand where there are things in it that I'm not a huge fan of. I would like to have seen things a little differently. But I can understand where some people didn't like it. And some people are just, their minds, they're just out there. Like, they don't, they, they're just on another planet. Um, yeah. With, with, well, you know, that's I mean, their opinion. You know, like, I'm not going to hate on, like, I get oh, where they're coming from. I do it. Yep. Um, well, you know, you can't, uh, you know, you can't blame some of them with the, um, with the theatrical version when it came out, you know, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the theatrical version and I saw almost all the beats that ended up in the ultimate edition, you know, cause they just kind of cut them out, but they still had them like behind scenes. Um, there's, there you know, are, they all little it, things that I really loved in the ultimate edition. Uh, one being, I just liked the, the line about the wheelchair was encased in lead. The bomb was encased in lead and Clark wouldn't be able to see it even if he had tried. You know, people said, well, why didn't he see the bomb? You know, and I was like, maybe it was lead. And then in the ultimate edition, boom, there it is. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, I, so I get those little nitpicks and stuff. Also, I mean, the film was a weird like setup because I tried to put way too much more. I've often said I would have liked the film to have been a two parter. Part one being Batman versus Superman. And then those two reconciling at the end. And then at the end of that part would be Lex Luthor basically deciding he's gonna have to step up his game and 
you know, it's revealed that he's been pulling the strings the whole time. And then part two is would have been called like Dawn of Justice, where it would have been Wonder Woman would have been introduced. That's when we would have got the Doomsday fight. There would have been more of Batman and Superman pairing up, um, like Superman coming to Batman, like, I need your help. And Superman would die that way. So we got a chance to really breathe with these characters um, a little bit more. But, you know, as, as Snyder has said and conceived it after Man of Steel was, the three, his, his trilogy is a very odd look at trilogies. The Superman trilogy being Superman, BVS, and then Justice League being the third part. Yeah. So it's a very interesting kind of way to approach Superman's character and his story is that the trilogy is like three different movies. Um, yeah, to build him up to be the Superman. So, so I, I'm just like, I guess my, as excited I am for Justice League, I'm just more curious about what's next because I, I do want a second Justice League film because I want to see all seven of them in full go. Um, and not just like starting to form and everything that you have like in the first film. Um, as well as I, we want our Man of Steel too. Okay. We want a Superman movie that's back to just being a Superman movie. So, but what we're going to talk about is we're going to, uh, so far, what has your been impression with the trailer so far? We got, that original Comic Con footage from last year that had the white stripes music in it, and then we got the comic, the official trailer, which is the one that started off with Bruce Wayne on the horse. Then we got the Comic Con footage uh, this year. So those three, what 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 has been your uh, feeling and thoughts as you've experienced each one of those? Well, you know, each one has definitely got me um, <clears throat> more excited than the last. Um, uh, I think they've picked the music well, um, you know, the different music, the the white stripes uh, then come together. And uh, now even in this last one, we got heroes, kind of a cover of uh, David Bowie's heroes, but um, a still a very good one and, and an amazing song. Which, which OK, I'm going to throw this out there real quick. What's interesting is, for the longest time, I didn't know that Heroes was a Bowie cover because my first was on the Godzilla soundtrack when the Wallflowers did it. That was my first introduction to the song as well. It, it was quite a few years before I um, uh, realized, found out that it was a cover by David Bowie. Yeah, I was like, wow, like that was just one of those things. Like, oh, okay, that's cool. Um, it's just it's just interesting like the like the things you're exposed to and you don't realize like a uh, knocking on heaven's door you know I didn't realize that Guns N' Roses had covered a Bob Dylan song for a while after you know when I first heard it uh, yeah things like that so um you know and I think like you were talking about the music with the trailers I like the come together too they finally yeah it. and I like it that it's like a remix um not so much a, a cover and stuff like that, because it, it helps you create the feel that you're going for instead of uh, just using the regular song. Um, so I, I've liked that. And on that note, you know, I've heard people not like that they used a pop song in this trailer. And what it made me think back was when Joss Whedon, like we know Whedon's involved, and this feels more like a Whedon inspired trailer. Mm -hmm. The first trailer for the Avengers, if I remember, had Nine Inch Nails, we're in this together now playing. And this is kind of what that reminded me of. It's just that, like, a song that, you know, it, it's shifting away more from, like, because we know that when they did the Come Together, Junkie XL had worked on the cover, too. And since he was removed as composer, um, like, it kind of, I don't want to say softens. But that kind of does give a different tone to the footage of this. Yeah. Uh, so that's one thing that I've really like thought about when the pop songs. Um, right. Yes, I would have liked to have heard some Danny Elfman score. We'll throw that out there right now. I'm very curious with what he's doing 
for the Justice League. I'm I've been on record saying I'm happy that Junkie XL was removed. I feel like he makes good sound for when I'm watching a film, but for the most part, when I listen to a lot of his stuff on its own, like just putting in a, a CD or whatever, it just doesn't always translate the best. Like, yeah, okay. Um, not that it's bad. It's just I like more classic composer. Uh, in the sense, like even Hans Zimmer kind of bounces in between because you know you think about he uses that modern edge, but at the same time. That piano part for Man of Steel, the beginning is extremely beautiful and simple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. His score for the last two films is just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, the, uh, the different releases, you know, each release since this, this film's been in development for so long, um, you know, each release just, just tiny bits of, you know, uh, yeah, slowly revealing just a little bit more each time it comes out, and the music that they put with their reveal works. You know, it's like come together really well, and you know the way that in this one, <clears throat> the uh, the way heroes work so well, um, because because they they have to become you know that the heroes that theme yes hold on put it i'm gonna grab my baby hold on a second yeah Absolutely right. You know, one thing with this trailer and this style different than I hate always and comparing with Marvel was with Marvel, with each of them kind of having their solo film, you already have these established stories of them being heroic. And with this, it's like they're stepping up their game. Like, we don't know what Aquaman's been up to. We know he's been helping villagers. We know the Flash stopped a bank robbery. And a convenience store getting robbed. We don't even know what side yeah. Maybe he's not done much, you know? So this is like, there's a line in one of the trailers that says, each one of us has held back in some way. Welcome back, you And that's what we're getting here. Now, I will say, before we get into the trailer breakdown, I was shocked by this trailer. <laughs> The fact that we got more of the same, just kind of retooled. Hold on, buddy, turn around. Um, you know, I, I was I was expecting maybe more of a trailer, a little bit more about the story. That was going to touch on a little bit more of Steppenwolf. I, I right. hope to see Steppenwolf's face. It was like a straight up shot, so we like uh, get more of an idea of him. But once again, this trailer, you know, kind of pulled back and just uh, it showed us some new footage, but it also showed us just um, like the same scenes, but a little bit different of where those scenes take place, um, which is fine. I'm not against it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm yeah, um, the, and some extra, oh, absolutely, uh, 100%. Um, you know, the, the, yeah, they've showed a lot of the same stuff, you know, they threw some little bits in there that, um, uh, will, will be some story points. Um, but some of the stuff that some of the new stuff they added in there was the, some character interactions, uh, some of the, some of the team members talking to each other. And, and that's what we need, I mean, that's what we need to see. Like, we need to see how these characters and people, their personalities work. Because uh, that's a big, you know, that's the big selling point is them coming together and working. And we got, you know, um, I had mentioned this to you kind of offsite. It was like, 
We know that Bruce got some sort of vision about dark side and about something dark coming. You know, and then we had Luther's little speech at the end of BBS. And I had said to you, like, do you think because at that time, uh, Bruce Wayne was a good man in a dark place, kind of going, for lack of a better term, to the dark side, that that's how he was able to see that, or is it because the Flash was screwing up with time when he ran back, um, that Bruce got his vision? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, those those are definitely some inter- those are definitely interesting thoughts. Um I am I'm very curious to see where they uh where they go with it because some of those things that did um seem more or less out of place um to some and I mean, yeah, they they were out of place a little bit, but um uh, as, as a story beat and I knew that they wanted to that it was building towards more um that and and it's not traditional storytelling to put those out there and then just let them hang until the future installments actually um, dive in and explain what they're about. And, so and I was I was watching BBS uh, a little offshoot with Solo and stuff, and I was looking in the background to think, uh, wouldn't it be something if maybe one of the characters that. Um, was in there gets to be revealed to be like Dasad or Godfrey or even, or, um, you know, one of the minions of Darkseid that like came first undercover to prepare the world for war invasion. And then right. Darkseid sends Steppenwolf to clean up any, anything else. Um, yeah. But, you know, that, well, that's me thinking. Yeah. Well, you know, kind of on the lines of the, of Darkseid, the invasion, um, you know, from the trailer, uh, there's some there's some real interesting beats there. You know, they've got the obviously Robin Wright is back uh, as Antiope. Um, Which is so interesting. And, like thinking about when did this battle take place with the Amazons, um, and why is it that you know just thinking about the lore that we learned about of the Amazons in Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah, I think in Wonder Woman, um, I think in Wonder Woman, uh, a lot of that lore kind of just feeds into, into Greek mythology. Um, a lot of it is stories is, you know, I feel that that's what they are is a lot of them are stories. Like they live through certain things like that invasion that they've shown bits and pieces of, uh, since, uh, different, through different Comic Con trailers. Um, but uh that that war with with the Amazons and um you know they said that the Atlanteans were involved and and man was involved at the time um so it's that's kind of like what that epic that prologue sequence. like Lord of the Rings style that you know right in that original comic con trailer we saw like what looked like king or something bearing what we can only assume is a mother box um, cause there's supposed to be three yep. other boxes, you know, Atlantis has one, mankind has one, and then the, the Amazons have one. And I got thinking about this as I was watching Wonder Woman was with the death of Ares. Okay. Even with Diana still being there, uh, cause she's kind of like, we'll say like a hidden pseudo pseudo God. With mm-hmm. the death of Ares, in a sense, it's like the old gods are dead, and now the new gods can take over. Like, right, kind of leaves a. It makes me wonder. Leaves like, an opening for the new gods. Like, what if we saw, like in the in the flashback battle, like what if we saw like the actual Greek gods take part in it, and that's part of what that helped would be drive absolutely. them away. Be crazy. And then, like I said, that's what kind of like, oh, well, Ares died. He was the last of the gods. And then now there's no Superman anymore, who is kind of like a new god in a sense. I hate using the term new god just because that's so, that's such a stigma on like Darkseid and all of them being the new gods. Um, 
Right. Well, you know, I mean, with their story, when, when Jack Kirby wrote that long time ago, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was dark side sisters who were the old gods. And then when they, you exactly. know, took over, they became the new gods. So long story short. <laughs> yeah. Very long story. <clears throat> the idea is once Superman was dead in their eyes, that new, that newer God that had established was gone. Now there's nothing. Cause like in the trailer, it says no Kryptonian, no lantern. Um, now there's not a, as they see it, there's no force to oppose them. Um, yeah. So I, which I was, I'm, that would be really cool. It would also be cool if we see something like with Poseidon as being like a reason or a way for the Atlanteans, um, just tying that back together. Mm hmm. No. Well, that's, you know, that's supposed to be where, uh, you know, where the trident came from. Exactly. For the, the Atlantis. So, uh, I'm, you know, it, it all does tie together. All right. So we're going to jump into the heroes trailer. Uh, and we'll, as we go through it, we might jump back and hit high points or things we've noticed from the previous trailers. Um, cause we could be here all day if you looked at all the trailers. And then, like I said, the TV spots that come out and there's little things in there. Um, sh a shot here and there. So. I'm, mm -hmm. I've seen this trailer like a gazillion times, literally, yeah. uh, because like, I have a video file on my computer here where I've just ripped every trailer and have like 20 minutes of Justice League footage. Um, just sitting nice. Here. <laughs> sure, it's all the same, a lot of same clips and stuff over and over, but it's just sitting here as one long um, trailer to view. But we're going to talk about. When this trailer was coming out, there's a few things I wanted to see. I wanted to see Steppenwolf's face. I wanted to hear some Elfman score. I wanted to see the credits. <laughs> um, and I wanted to see tickets now on sale. <laughs> I did not yeah. want to see Superman. I was like, you know, as much as, yes, I want to see Superman, okay? I don't want to see him in a trailer. I'm okay with the marketing. Um, you know, with him not showing up, we not seeing him because I mean, we know he's coming back. I yeah. Mean, it's really built the anticipation and of Superman's Earth. Exactly. And they don't, I don't think they need him to sell this film. I think just watching this, uh, just watching the trailer and like, it's going to come out when this film's done and over with. It's going to be like, who do you like more, Aquaman or Flash? That's what it's going to be when this movie ends. Um, that pretty much seems that way. I mean, that, that's, that's what it's going to be. And that's cool because I've always liked Aquaman, and I love what they're doing with him. And not to get too far ahead, but the reason why we brought this up is one of the greatest shots, period, is the opening of this trailer. And it kicks in at its lowest lane, walking outside. And I'm just gonna watch it here for a second. Here, we'll take a moment. Here, the volume turned down. But she yeah. walks outside, and she just see there's someone standing in the cornfield. And she looks, and you hear that music kick in. And there, he, there's Clark standing there. The sun's coming up. Uh, in the cornfield, you know, he tells her, takes that as a yes, and she's just wearing the ring. And I mean, it's just, it's just nice to see Henry's face. Yeah. I love how they showed Superman without showing Superman. They showed a bit of Clark he's and the, then moved on from him. He's the third, like, I always say, like, he, that's, that's him. As the person, and as the person that he is, is, we see the most of in Man of Steel. We have Clark, mm -hmm. the uh, the exaggeration that he has to become to hide, and then Superman, who's more of this stoic uh, figure that he presents himself as, and then you have him as himself, and that's what we see here, kind of a callback to. Uh, Superman the movie, the 
shirt. Come on. Right. Come on. I know. I, I like um. I like the yeah the callbacks. I like the contrast so they did. Um, almost a similar scene of looking out across the field. Um, just the sky, a person in the field. Um, from BVS, Bruce's dark place in BVS and the dark and dying fields, and um, uh, and then this the vibrant colors and the um the sun rising. I mean, it just brings you such happiness right off the bat. And when you hear that score kicking, it's just, and it's just like, man, this is what I'm waiting to see. And I'm like, and then like, you know, we have the flashback segment of her dumping the, the, to remind you, like her dumping the dirt on the grave. And then it's cut to where she wakes up like it's a dream. And it makes me very interested how the scene's actually going to play out in the movie. Me too. I, yeah, I, I, I'm think, I think and I hope, um, that this scene is cut to look like a dream for the trailer. I, I kind of hope that, you know, after his resurrection, um, that the first, the first thing he wants to do, the first person he wants to see is Lois. And, and that's what he does. So I, I'm thinking that you know, that's just cut. It's just made to look that way. Um, I, I think that, you know, he's going to actually, this is a real thing that he's his return to Lois. Exactly. And I mean, and then it's just, and then the shot of her waking up is just so contrast to being dark about like how the world is empty. We hear more of the reports about crime being up, uh, world without hope, terrorism, terrorism superman we get another glimpse of that london looks like the attack that where wonder woman shows up but Mm -hmm. like another quick shot of parademons looks like attacking the amazons and then of course we see steppenwolf descend down in the same shot um yeah the quick shot now this has been something that i've heard people debate is well it looks like a male warrior He's either turning to Ash or he's turning to a parademon. Because like we saw in Justice League War, they take prisoners of the planets that they're on and turn them to parademons. Yeah. It makes me... uh, I'm kind of curious about that. I hope there's more to the process of becoming a parademon then uh just you know wolf's axe on the ground that's right problematic <laughs> it, it kind of does and i i think there's probably more to it than just you know just the axe to the ground um being a painful transformation uh i don't think i i think with the the slow reveals of you know steppenwolf being the villain in this not and not seeing dark side or possibly seeing anybody else for who knows how many more movies that uh you know parademons aren't taken back to apocalypse to be tortured and transformed by Desaad. you know so there's more of a way to to do that on the battlefield and um you know turn turn the tides uh their favor by you know transforming them into into the parademons, uh, you know, mid battle and have them turn right back or go the other way. And, and I agree. Like, I, I hope there's like, I mean, I, if he has like, cause it looks like there's apocalyptic te- tech that he brings with him or something. It's kind of hard, like a ship or something. Um, if it's, if it happens in the ship, fine. Um, yeah. you know, I think. So far, like I like the look of Steppenwolf. I like that he's bigger than them. Um, mm-hmm. It's also kind of getting a little on my nerves, just a little, that the big bads get to be like these. They cast great actors in the role, but then they're like motion captured. Mm. Think about, um, you know, in Man of Steel, Zod's armor was all motion capture. 
It wasn't really there. And then we had Doomsday, of course, motion capture. Um, oh, yeah, motion capture CG. And then, you know, I think Harry. But besides Doomsday, like, big posing, that was, it was, that was a nice touch, though. Yes. And then you think about Ares. Like, I was looking back at when they released, like, the toys and what Ares was supposed to look like with the official Wonder Woman toys and everything. And then the Ares, when we got him in the movie, he was different. And it makes mm-hmm. me wonder if they decided to change it during post-production because he's, he's like, all CG um, outfit and everything. Yeah, metal armor he got from all the the metal and weapons around him. And so when we look at Steppenwolf, I'm like, man, you have a great actor. He has a great voice. Um, And, you know, he's all CG'd. And I'm like, I can get to a point. But at the same time, I'm like, man, I just would like the actor to. is Because when, it, when it's like that, it makes me question, like, was the actor on set for a lot of the action scenes? Or was it like they just filmed him in a booth to get his face, like, recogni- recognized and his... uh voice and then just molded molded that CG with the the uh, action created by the stuntman or whatever who was on set. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. But I like that the villain is Steppenwolf. I like that it's someone that has enough of a back and forth storyline where we can do something different with him. Um, and it's someone that people don't know. And it also leads to Darkseid being present in some form if he wants to show up in another movie or if he shows up in this movie. We don't know because, I mean, honestly, if this as we go through this, if this is the last trailer, we're not getting much more than what we've already seen. The biggest chunk yeah. of what was new was in the, the last trailer where we actually saw Steppenwolf more. This is more like we see, like, the before shot or a different angle of a shot we've already seen. You know, yeah, the, uh, the, with, with Steppenwolf, you know, they've, they've shown him in so many different spots. So, you know, I mean, he's, he's gotta be more than a physical presence, you know, just being big, you know, just being a big, powerful bad guy. You know, he's, he's in Atlantis. He's in the, he's in the ancient war. He's, uh, fighting them in, it looks like at least a couple of different places. Yeah, because um, like he takes on Wonder Woman. Um, she's trying to fight him by herself. He takes on, it looks like he fights Aquaman in Atlantis. And I wonder if that's when Aquaman then decides to go back and reconsider Bruce's idea. Um, now, looking through the trailer, one of the, the shots that I think is interesting is where it looks like a bunch of parademons are coming out of a nuclear power plant. I'm, I'm on that shot here as well. I wanted to talk about that. Because, I mean, you have this little girl who, the way it's designed here, she's looking out the window and it cuts, and it's like parademons coming out of this nuclear plant. And I'm like, it looks almost like just bugs infesting. Mm-hmm. Um, well, from... One, from the shot of Bruce sitting in the chair uh, with Diana standing up to his right and he's talking on the screens behind are actually um, some famous shots of uh, locales in Chernobyl. So it seems as though that this, that the, the apocalypse invasion has been on and off for centuries you know that they might be able that they might be turning uh turning the events of Chernobyl into uh, having some sort of association with the um like uh, with with apocalypse invading that could have been where the the humans mother box was located and when they yeah they built it or dug it up or whatever um you know it released radiation now we get the we get the same shot of Jim Gordon flipping the bat signal. And then we get that shot that we had before of Batman on the roof looking at the signal. Only this time, they've added in the bat one. This is one of those shots that's been 
um, altered because the bat wing has been added. Yeah. And I'm like, that's interesting to me is like, what, what changed or what made him want to do that compared to before? When was this kind of him? Right. There? Yeah. Cause I mean, still the iconic shot that they had before of him just on the rooftop looking up at the bat signal, just an iconic shot. But yeah, like it's changed. The bat wing comes in. Like, where does it lead? And then the next big shot, and that's when the hero song really, you get to really hear what it is. Because that's when mm-hmm. you hear the vocals kick in. And the next shot is good old Aquaman. And that's right, Aquaman. Underwater. Like, and that's, that's straight up a new shot. That's straight up new footage of him. With, and I think the, the water scenes are what I'm interested in the most. Um, as far as like, the technical aspect, um, making it feel like they really are underwater and that the water is physical presence. Um, and it just looks, I mean, it looks awesome. Oh, big time. Uh, they've, I mean, they've done a lot of, they've done a lot of shooting underwater for a lot of different films and stuff, but then, you know, they go down, they get their breather, they shoot it underwater, then they have to give them oxygen, go back up. It's a whole big process, but the entire, the, the entirety of the entire scene, everybody around, like, they've got to, you know, speak, communicate, move the technical, technical aspects of, of creating Atlantis is just going to be, I mean, I'm sure that was incredibly challenging to bring that to the screen. It makes me wonder, like, there's a thing, like, they use, like, when they're making movies, like, dried away, like, um, or they'll use like you know, green screens and fans and like motion to give you like the impression and they'll add effects to make it look like they're underwater. And in some instances it can be okay and some it looks just awkward. Um, and then I think like, well, would they do something like, and I hate to even reference this, but it's the only thing I can think of. Um, in Star Wars episode one, when they go to the Gungans underwater. And you kind of wonder why are the Gungans in these like bubble places dry when they're technically, I guess because they're amphibious, they don't need to be in the water constantly. But would the Atlanteans have something like that or would it just be open water the entire time? Um, so I'm yeah. curious about what the Atlantis is going to be like in, in that sense. And then the trailer shifts. We see Wonder Woman standing on a justice statue. By the sword. Mm-hmm. Just epic. These are all like, I guess you could say all the character moments real quick. Like, you know, we can be heroes. We see Batman, then Aquaman, then Wonder Woman, then Cyborg chilling in his hoodie, uh, at his house pulling up something like with his, like a map, it looks like. And then it cuts to a, um, a very bright, which I like, shot of Flash smiling. Mm hmm. And then we get the shot of Aquaman in what I can only assume is like some extremely cold water. <laughs> I would assume. Because I know they filmed it in Iceland. Yeah. Um, and he has a line about, have you ever heard the strongest man is the strongest alone? And we get the Bruce Wayne, that's not how that saying goes line. That's which is the hilarious. Opposite, the exact opposite of the saying. Yeah, that's the exact opposite of anything. And yeah, I'm, I, yeah, along with that, you know, that, that Bruce line, like they're going, they're going for the, um, uh, the Justice League Unlimited animated series where, where Batman's funny beats come from his sarcasm. Yes. Come, you know, come. From, come from something other than trying to be funny, trying to throw in quips. So, and not to jump ahead, but it's even that same, that same way at the end of the trailer when we get there. You know, it's, it's, it's from that same place. Yeah. It, the, the humor. It comes from, yeah, exactly. I highly recommend listening who hasn't seen. Try to check out some episodes of Justice League, the animated series, before this. It is probably the best cartoon ever. Um, 
storyline <laughs> and all the characters. And since you brought that up, I really think that this Aquaman is going to be a nice blend of the Aquaman from the Justice League animated series along with the Aquaman from Brave and the Bold. I kind of see it like at first he's going to be like the animated series Aquaman. Very kind of strong. I don't need anyone. And then I think based on some of the scenes where it looks like he's having fun with them fighting and enjoying the people that he's with. Um, yeah. Um, I, part of my favorite thing about the DC universe so far is the way that they're introducing these characters. Um, you know, Jason Momoa this week has come out and said that uh, some people are not, some people might not like or enjoy his interpretation of Aquaman because he's not, he's not the king of Atlantis that his story arc is not going to be, uh, fulfilled until the end of the Aquaman movie. Which is great. And, uh, yeah, um, I like, I like how DC is just kind of like getting these characters in and even if they're in, in this ensemble piece first and then they get their, their movie later, there's still more to- story to tell and they're still on their, their hero's journey. You know, they're not just, they're not just, they put on the suit and they're like the greatest heroes in the, in the world. You know, exactly. there, there's a, an emotional resonance to their development. Exactly. And I'm, I'm completely okay with letting him like, meet Aquaman and then it filters into maybe, uh, the Aquaman film. Now, mm-hmm. moving forward with the trailer, the next shot we get is the Batmobile. And this is where some of the new effects are. The sky is extremely red. And now I'm starting to wonder if this is Chernobyl, where they are. But we have what looks like purple crystal. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if it's like purple, like ash or tentacles or, or what. That kind of keeps like spreading over. And we had the Batmobile running down, and we get an awesome front view of the cannon on the Batmobile that blasts. And we see that gun. We see that uh, shell case. Kind of, kind of, kind of looks like the. Yeah, kind of looks like the when they introduced the cannon first time in um, Arkham Knight. <laughs> yeah. So we have that kind of like mysterious scene, and now that I think about it, like more and more, I'm wondering if a lot of this battle that these scenes look like take place if it is in like Chernobyl, an area where as we all know is you can't have these hero battles now in an area that's heavily populated so it'd be somewhere that's not populated yeah uh, So yeah for some for some reason since Man of Steel you know these battles can't be fought in a populated area even though <laughs> Ultron tried to just you know destroy a whole city by lifting it in the mm-hmm. air and destroy yeah. things and, uh, I mean, you gotta give it to them for giving them the, the thing like, you know, the civilians come first, you know, save people. That was a great beat, but, you know, it's like lift this entire city, destroy an entire city to destroy the planet. And, you know, there's really nothing wrong with that. But, you know, uh, alien comes to destroy, destroy the planet and is destroying a city. Same thing. And like, it's, it's outlandish. <laughs> I, I think my favorite meme I saw yesterday was, um, it said, why is it, and I think you posted it or commented on it, like, why is it that DC gets criticized saying it's all too CG, and then it shows the image of Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok, uh, where you can tell right now Thor Ragnarok's heavily CG. And it's like, yeah. everybody lets that slide with Marvel, but when it comes to DC, people are like, oh, look at all that CG. Yeah. And, and same beat, I had, uh, uh, I had a meme too. It was, uh, uh, Thor, um, the world is going to be destroyed. My, you know, my world's end. They can be funny and laugh about it. But then when Superman is, you know, in the exact same situation. Yeah. He actually is carrying that weight of the world on his shoulders and he's swinging. It. <laughs> yeah. Everyone puts him down because like, it, it is a double standard. It straight up is a double standard that we're getting from the whole Marvel and DC back and forth. Um, and I, I mean, I love the Marvel movies. I've seen all of them. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to see Thor Ragnarok. I do feel that they're kind of doing a disservice to the Planet Hulk storyline. 
We'll see how it goes. I'm still going to see it. They're they're fun and enjoyable. I agree on both. On both I don't, of that. I'm gonna. I like them. Yeah, that's about all. I just on that. <laughs> so, the next shot we see is one we have seen before, and it's the Flash doing a stance, and then he takes off running. But what's fun to point out with this shot is yes, it looks like it's at Heroes Park, but what's interesting is how brighter mm. this shot looks, and. How in this scene, his lightning now looks more white compared to the previous trailer where it looked more blue. Mm -hmm. And this scene is definitely more like vibrant. And then the next scene is where we can see a Steppenwolf punching Aquaman underwater. And Aquaman well, before that, during the Flash run, the thing I'm curious about is you see Flash's foot like hit the corner of a step and it looks like things are like the concrete and stuff is breaking around his foot. Yes, it does. It's going to be interesting how they, it's going to be interesting the, the way they, um, talk about and, and utilize, utilize Flash's powers. Um, I, I think it's going to be something a little different than, than the thing we've seen before, especially, uh, the Flash TV show. I agree. Uh, I'm curious about how, just the seeing, like we, that's like we've only seen these two shots, basically of him moving. Uh, we see in the trailer, so it's curious about how they show him move more. Um, there's a there's a scene, and I don't think it's in this trailer again, where it's like he pushes and fights some parademons, but it looks like he's so fast it's almost like he's there, and then he's not, but he moves uh, mm -hmm. without us even being able to see it. So I'm curious. Yeah, that one where it looks like just. That one where it just looks like he pushes the parademon too. It's like he's so fast that just pushing him like that, I mean, like sent him through those doors and smashing into the wall, like with so much impact, with so much force. And I, I'm, I'm, there's a there's a there's a flash shot later in this trailer. I, I can't wait to discuss. Um, so we see Aquaman get thrown, fighting Steppenwolf. And then Steppenwolf and Aquaman crash into some sort of structure. So we are going to get a good scene. It looks like in Atlantis. Mm -hmm. Cyborg screaming. It looks like he's on board of an apocalyptic vessel. We have a very sad looking Wonder Woman face. It's just like she leaps into battle fighting Steppenwolf herself. The parademons around. So this is like the part of the trailer where it's showing us like how each... And I mean, if you slow it down, you can kind of see Steppenwolf's face. But I want, mm -hmm. but I'm more curious. Like I want to see a full-on good shot of his face. But this is like the scene that shows us each one of them is fighting him, and they're not doing so well. Yeah. Um, we see a police officer getting out of her car and looking up. We see that very interesting shot again of Bruce looking at what looks like a holographic image of Superman that some people are trying to say is Supergirl. Um, we're not even Look, looks pretty much like, yeah, it looks pretty much Superman to me. The boots, the the pants, you know, it looks a lot like it's, it's, a, it's a hologram, and I'm just gonna go with it and not pick it apart. Just let mm -hmm. it, it go. We see the mm -hmm. the if you seek his monument, look around you from BBS. Then we get this awesome shot of Wonder Woman stepping on her sword and flipping it up and catching it. It just looks like she's about to go, like, DA on somebody. Mm -hmm. And then the next scene is you got to pay quick attention, but it's Cyborg taking off. But if you look, Steppenwolf is behind him on the ground. And, like, Steppenwolf's getting up as Cyborg takes off. So it was that Cyborg's battle with Steppenwolf on his own. <clears throat> All right, and then a quick beat of the flash. Once again, we've seen this before, but looking at it now, like it just looks brighter. And like I said, the lightning looks white. And then we get a different look of what seems like that image where he touches Wonder Woman's sword. That's what it looks like. Yeah, that that kind of that's an interesting scene. I kind of wonder if she's like in a bad position. She loses a sword. It's falling, and then he just. Swoops around, stops it in, in midair, and, and she's able to, like, you know, get it and keep going or something. That's going to be, 
a quite interesting use of, of how he's able to use his speed to help people out in, in the, those times of need like that. Exactly. And then we get Batman putting on his goggles. And then Lily is yeah. piloting the flying fox towards a giant dome of energy. Mm-hmm. And then here's we see Aquaman in the sky stabbing a parademon, and then he's falling. And this is where I say like it reminds me of more of the this Aquaman right here is gonna be more along the lines of like the Brave and the Bold. He gets caught by Cyborg with the great line of "Ride's not over yet," and he just hey, my man. Him. And yeah, he's just like, like he's like, yeah, man, like throw me back in there, I'm ready to fight some more. Like he just right. Uh, and every shot, this is a this is a different shot of him throwing that trident into a parademon. But every time I see him fucking whip that trident try into a parademon or that one where he sticks two parademons with it, it's like. He is going to be dangerous. Oh, yeah. I love it, though. It just looks fun. <laughs> Spirit. Mm-hmm. Spirit some uh, parademons. And then we get Bruce in the Batmobile. And this is like a shot before a shot we've seen. The parademons are ripping off the top of the Batmobile. And then here comes Wonder Woman, and she takes them out. And this shot we've actually seen before, but it wasn't red. Like, we didn't have all the red that we have here. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have like there's a little bit of those purple thingies showing up, but this is yeah. where, but this is where the the shot gets really good for me is we didn't have this before. The flash runs by, yep. And to me, like it's just it's so interesting because I'm like it kind of shows just them more together, like he. Mm-hmm. And then we get the half smile shot of Wonder Woman, another shot of Batman, just in the awesome. Batman, uh, in the Batmobile shooting guns, having a good time. And then we get, we get a huge wide angle shot of, and like the more we talk about, I feel like this is Chernobyl. I'm going to say that some more and more. Like, Cause we see more of the red, but like these purple thingies and we see the Batmobile shooting and, uh, driving through and it's all red. And then we right, get blowing up buildings, the scene with the, Tower crashing over and stuff, like lots of like property damage. Yeah, which is the <laughs> best. And then we get this the Aquaman on the Batmobile again, oh, uh, doing his yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And this scene, was which like, I like the. Uh, sorry, go ahead. No, no I was gonna say, it's the color is a little different. It's more more red, vibrant yeah. compared to before. But what were you say? Um. Well, then that that jumps over to one of the um. One of the TV spots that came out, uh, this week where <laughs> he says, uh, he tells Batman that you really are out of your mind. And Batman says back to his, uh, sarcastic humor there. I'm not the one who brought a pitchfork. <laughs> yes. I was going to mention that too, like from the TV spot. Like, I love that. Um, and then we get the closing shot scene is the Barry Allen with. Diana and Bruce and the bat signal shines and he's all excited like, that's your sign, we gotta go. I mean, I mean like he lowers his voice. And it's just kind of funny because right. like he has all this youthful energy. Right, you're about to out Batman right there. <laughs> he's so excited for everything and then like, you know, Batman's like, I'm old, I'm in my 40s and he's like, yeah, that's my sign, we, we need to go and then he like looks at Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman's like, I'm like, you know, hundreds of years old guys and uh, yeah, they go off not, together, not. you know, and, and that's the beat the trailer ends on, which is fun. And it it, it hints that it makes me wonder if we're going to have some sort of uh, like in the Justice League series, uh, Bruce and Diana, like a uh, love story type thing. Because you know, yeah, Steve, Steve's dead. I'm not opposed. Um, I'm not opposed to it. Uh, it, it definitely played for some good story in um. In the in the animated series, uh, I, I I feel that it could work because um, you know Steve being the first man she the first man she knew the first man she fell in love with um, he he had that that good spirit you know that strong warrior spirit and um, you know would do did what he did sacrificed himself and. You know, I, I feel that she could kind of see that same thing 
in Bruce, you know? So, I mean, I think it could work. I agree, too. It also, I think, um, I liked it in the Justice League cartoon. And like you said, I think it could work. Now, looking forward, I'm going to kind of skim through this here. Um, they released a trailer that same day on Instagram. It was a little different. We have a shot of Alfred talking to Bruce, saying things about his team. And what else was different? Yes, here? that's the uh, the Unite trailer that they released on Instagram. Yep. And then we see what looks like an Amazon glowing with power, shooting an arrow at an apocalyptic ship. Uh, Batman. Which I assume is probably the ancient battle. Yep. Down an apocalyptic ship with a with an arrow of some sort. <laughs> we have Batman using his grapple hook and kicks some parademons. Uh, we get a during the shot that we have seen before of Aquaman like stopping the water or parting the seas. We get a shot real quick of him moving backwards, but we see it from the ground, so we see the trident go through the ground. Yes. Uh, uh, which is very interesting to me, the, the water scene. I mean, um, obviously Steppenwolf and, and some other apocalypticians, they can, they, they would have some, some power to, you know, move earth and water. Just saying that it, that, that much power, you know, not for sick, not particularly control of earth and water, but enough power to move that, you know, so is that coming at him or is that, does that have anything to do with perhaps uh, Joe Manganiello's tease at, at New York Comic Con where he wore that Legion of Doom shirt with the same font as Justice League? Man, I was like, bring could that, that be <laughs> could that be some sort of a hint at you know a, a, the Legion of Doom Ocean Master, an early look at these characters or something? I was thinking more of Black Manta. Um, yeah, I I hope they play Ocean Master out, which I feel they do. Where he's kind of like you don't realize he's a villain. He is a villain kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. But we're gonna get to that, Joe, here in a second. So we get the next clip is Diana. What it seems like it's a beat right after she flips the sword back in her hand. She's yelling and she jumps through the air, and then we see Steppenwolf on the ground where Cyborg lands. What else is, oh, then I have them all together. So then the next TV spot shows the Justice League like coming up in the Batcave. <clears throat> like an underwater elevator and Flash is just like ear to ear grins. Uh, we see where Bruce says, I need warriors. We see Aquaman with just regular civilian clothes. We do get a beat shot early. Uh, we had seen before where Aquaman looks like he's standing on a rock. In the earlier footage, and this we see him mm-hmm. coming from the air and lands on it as if he jumped from somewhere. Mm. But once um, again, like just looking at the footage, that, that yeah, that that shot of them like coming up. There's that big noticeable gap in between people. Like, did did have they digitally removed uh, Superman from maybe one or two little? little shots it's not like that it's not like that hasn't been done before you know uh, digitally removing aspects from a trailer just to keep something hidden so that when you see it in the film it's there yep i was gonna say that because i read that and i got thinking about that because i feel like (sighs) there might be some of that in the new star wars trailer but that's a whole other conversation Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah i wonder if there's some scenes where and just the way this is, like, watching the footage, like, just, we're seeing the same footage, just maybe a little, a, a beat before, a beat after. It seems like a whole bunch of this movie is still, like, hidden to us. Um, you know, we see it, we get a scene here where uh, one of the robbers in that opening Wonder Woman shot hits her on the back of the head with a gun. And she just turns around, and we see that Alfred's monitoring her. Which is a kind of a really cool reveal. Um, yeah. Because I always, thought, <laughs> I like, that. you know, it my, seemed like he, went through. <laughs> oh, I, I just, I like that Alfred quote, that Alfred saying right there. Doesn't seem like he thought that went through. Like, hit her in the, try and hit her in the head with a gun. Like you messed up, dude. <laughs> exactly. Cause I, I thought, what if like, 
You know when Wonder Ooh. Woman ends, like she's going off to stop something in London. I thought, what if like that was the scene, um, you know, that opens up Justice League? Is I thought the exact same thing. But I, I but I kind of question it now with the whole Alfred monitoring her thing. But I mean, it's still possible. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how how much? I mean, if they're getting more comic book accurate, you know, how how much did uh, Batman monitor and study? Uh, everybody that he, you know, that he learned about. Oh, no, God. He investigated everybody. I mean, that's where, that's where Justice League Doom and, and, uh, where that storyline came from, I believe it was Tower of Babel or something. Uh, where he's, he's planned for these things. He's studied and investigated and, you know, it'd be really nice to have that side of Bruce in the films. Well, you know, based on, I feel like he's studied everybody. Uh, mm-hmm. before he approaches them to kind of get an idea of who they are and what they are. And so moving to the next TV spot, which I cannot remember what it's named. Um, are you talking about Friends one? I th- maybe. Yeah, it is because it, it, it opens up with the, I, I need friends line from, yeah. uh, cause we have this glorious shot of Wonder Woman, Aquaman, the Flash, and Cyborg standing together while like there's just this red sky. This is a nice side view shot. And then in this TV spot is where we do see the scene of the Flash fighting the Terry Demon. We get a shot of Cyborg holding the mother box. Let's see what else is different. Looks like some of it. Um, this is the one that has the you are crazy. I didn't bring a pitchfork. Um, dialogue. Daddy. Daddy. And then I think that's like all the newest footage that we've got. And, um, there's one shot in, another, in one of these TV spots where you see what looks like a giant ship from Apocalypse dropping like fire. It looks like it's during the ancient battle. Right. Um, uh, the end of this TV spot, the, the Justice League Friends TV spot, um, that gets me the most is um makes me the most curious is at the end there's a scene of Batman crouched down on the corner of a building or something and he's overlooking what I assume it looks absolutely like Memorial Park and it looks like the scout ship installation. Yes. Like he's gonna break and, in and do something. Exactly. And like what what does he want? What's he going there for? Uh you know the the only thing I can think of is we need Superman. Well, it brought the ship brought Doc to let, well created Doomsday. There is that line where he says the world needs Superman. Mm-hmm. And um, <clears throat> so it makes me wonder like what he's willing to do. Now, like I said, there's a really cool thing that's going on. Um, AT and T each week is doing a hero of the week. Aquaman was this past week's, and it's it's just some scenes that we've already seen, but it's Momoa talking about it, and I'm just going to point out one shot in it that's uh, it's really cool, it's new, is there's a scene where you're watching, it's Wonder Woman, Batman, and The Flash, and what looks like the three of them showing up to talk to Gordon, because Batman's starting to stand up as if he just leaped down, and The Flash comes running into the frame. It's just kind of neat to see. Uh, I look forward to seeing what, like, who we get this week. I wonder if it'll be the Flash right. or Cyborg, uh, just because I feel like those are three characters that they're trying to introduce us to. More so yeah, I think they're going to be that introduction, and I think I think though I think those three are going to be the standout characters of the movie. Um, so <laughs> that and the during the Aquaman, there's that shot of me swimming. Yes. Like they've got they've got the look of of kind of moving around in Atlantis. She's swimming and then just whoop, swoops up and stops. It's not like like they have full control of everything and every every motion they have underneath the water. So that's all the footage that's been released new since the Heroes trailer um, that we've kind of broke down and looked at and speculated on. Something else I wondered I wonder if Heroes Park. If, like, something, we get the Hall of Justice. 
Hmm. I don't know, like just that area, if that's where they build the Hall of Justice. That just that just came to me yesterday as I was thinking about stuff. Like that'd be really cool to see. Um, they yeah, they have so they have so much. They really have so much to go, so much to use backwards, forwards. They can do a lot of different stuff moving forward, especially as you know this movie is 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 the rise out of darkness. You know that's what Zack Snyder's trilogy's been about. So, yeah, I can't wait for these individual. I can't wait for the rest of these individual features. Plus, it has the earliest screen. One of the earliest screenshots we got was the team after the after the door opens, and there's all the smoke. And we've always seen the shot, just the door opens, but actually in that Aquaman uh, trailer, you actually get the door opens and they're all walking out. You actually get to see that scene in motion a little bit. Yes. Instead of, the, instead of just one shot. And just make all the different... Um, Plus that DC logo with the green and the orange. Awesome. <laughs> now, back to real quick while we have a moment here. Are you hoping that we do still get some sort of scene or tease or shot of Deathstroke in this movie? Um, well, I, I do. Um, I think Joe Manganiello would be, is going to be excellent in the role. And, um, uh, the, the screen test that they did, the, the suit, the mask, everything. I mean, it looked amazing. And I'm, I'm actually looking at that footage right now. I just, because, I mean, so much has gone on with changes in production as far as the Batman, where that goes from, um, you know, he had that shirt on. And it just makes me really hope that it, it he does get, you know, because they had speculated him appearing in Justice League. And I'm like, I hope he does somewhere, you know? I hope we do get him appearing in Justice League at some point and like just looking at these trailers you know like watching all of them together and everything um, I just it makes me just like I said like I feel like there's a whole chunk of the movie we're not even seeing yeah I feel like um, I, yeah, I think there's so much yeah so much still hidden um, the uh uh, I mean, there's the conflicting reports now since, uh, I guess the early fan screenings. Um, some people, they, they had said that some, some people are cut out of the movie. And then there's other conflicting reports saying that these people they said were cut out of the movie aren't cut out of the movie. Did people see different cuts of the film? You know? Do they see cuts of the film or are they just not paying attention? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Like, it's just one of those things that makes me kind of question. Um, because I don't care, like, oh, Iris West is cut out. It's fine. I don't care. I hope they didn't cut out Billy Crudup. Like, I think that's important for his quick scene that we saw in an earlier, uh, preview. Mm -hmm. I like how all the Watchmen actors are appearing as the parents <laughs> of characters. Just throwing that out there. Um, yeah. Mm. I just, I think Jackie Earl Haley should be Scarecrow, and I think. Matthew Good would be an awesome Eobard Thawn. Just throwing those out there so we can round out our Watchmen cast. Um, that's that's excellent. And, you know, uh, the whole Lex Luthor getting cut out, you know what? I don't know what kind of role he played, but I would have loved to have seen a scene of Lex Luthor sitting in Arkham and maybe just a shot of, like, Ar a hallway and a couple Batman villains in their cells. Mm -hmm. um, and then even if it's Luthor just sitting in his cell... And he's scouting, shouting, he's coming or he's here, you know, sensing the coming of Dark Side. Um, mm. Well, you could also think about, you know, um, Deathstroke's mercenary, you know, and if that tease of Legion of Doom has anything, there's got to be some kind of financial backing. And Lex Luthor was a big part of uh, the Legion of Doom. I mean, way back, super friends and everything. So. 
Hey, he could he could easily be pulling more strings. Exactly. So we're gonna have to put a pin in it right here with our Justice League thought because I have a bigger task at hand. I must go be super guy. <laughs> the little ones call it's about time for them with our NAPs. So thank you, yeah. James, for being back on the show and discussing Justice League. We know we'll have more to talk as um, we get more footage, more reports. And the movie comes out, so definitely uh, have to have you back for the Justice League review. Figured that's going to be probably another two uh, episodes. Me and I'll probably do <laughs> a uh, immediate reaction episode where we talk about it after a first scene, and then uh, another episode as we kind of think about it and see it multiple times. So, right. All right, buddy. I'll Sounds good. Chocolate milk. <laughs> so, all right, man. Look at you. Chill. Take care. You, you as well. And remember, look up in the sky for Superman.